many questions when it comes to the COVID vaccines. Should you wait for one specific vaccine and will you still need a booster shot? Well, we've got Dr. Leo Lee with us now. He's an infectious disease specialist with Beverly Hospital. He's going to help us get some answers. And Dr. Lee, we appreciate you sharing your expertise with us once again this morning. Got lots of questions about that Johnson & Johnson vaccine. And some people have asked mm -hmm. whether or not they should wait until the one shot vaccine is available. What's your take on that? You know, the Johnson Johnson vaccine is a terrific vaccine based on the clinical studies. Um, and so, unfortunately, it's not um, available right now. Johnson Johnson released their entire inventory, which is about 3.9 million doses. They're hoping to ramp things up, and hopefully by the end of the month, they'll get about 16 to 20 million doses, which would be their goal. Right now, there is Moderna, and there's also Pfizer out there. All of them are equally effective. And things uh, that people need to focus on is the fact that all three vaccines are equally effective in terms of preventing hospitalizations and preventing death. I know some individuals have expressed a concern that Johnson Johnson's numbers, which were 70, uh, 72%, but they were 85% global, um, and how that compares to the other two vaccines. And I tell them, basically, the vaccines were tested at different times. Uh, during the times that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines were tested, they didn't actually have a lot of the variants circulating, whereas Johnson Johnson, the variants were out there. But the bottom line is, most folks aren't going to have a choice, uh, just given the shortages. And if you have it available to it, get it. It doesn't matter what it is, either the Pfizer, Moderna, or Johnson Johnson. All of them are good. Yeah, that's a good point. You take what you can get at the time. Now, Dr. Absolutely. Lee, if some people if some people within a household are vaccinated, but then others aren't, does that change their risk? In other words, do vaccinated people lower the risk for other family members? Uh, that's a great question. Um, we don't really know, but yes, intuitively, yes. Uh, we, we think it probably does. And the reason I say to hesitate, yes, for sure, is because when they looked at the vaccines, when they did the initial trials, they did not look at asymptomatic infections in the vaccinated. Since then, there have been a number of studies looking at that. And what they've noticed that individuals who are vaccinated, when they subsequently become infected, and although they are asymptomatic, they tend to carry less virus with them. A study last month, in, in fact, in Israel, looked after a single dose of the vaccine. The amount of virus that was shed was actually decreased by about fourfold, and that was only after a single dose. We know from COVID and also from other viral infections, the more severe illnesses usually are associated with higher viral loads. Therefore, if you use that analogy, if you have less virus being shed, you're less infectious. And what you're describing also would be similar to, I guess, herd immunity. As more individuals in the community become infected or vaccinated, the remaining individuals in the community who are not vaccinated or infected actually have some protection. So I would say a tentative yes, but we won't know for sure until we get additional data. Okay, that's good information. That explains it pretty well. Thank you so much, Dr. Leo Lee, for being here and joining us this morning. Uh, Dr. Leo Lee with Beverly Hospital Infectious Disease Doctor. Have a great day, sir. You too. You have a great, week, great weekend. Thank you.